Hello, this is Sakamoto 3 one and this is my Chivalry Medieval Warfare Weapon Guide. Today, we'll be looking at the first unlock in the Blades category of the Met at Arms class, the Broadsword. The Broadsword was invented in the Dark Ages and used exclusively for warfare. Developed to kill non-heavily armored enemies, with the Broadsword held less of a stabbing tip and more of a slashing edge meant to cut enemies rather than pinpoint through plate armor. During the Napoleonic era, the broadsword was adopted by cavalry and given a curve to better adapt to being sheathed while on horseback. Unlike other ranged weapons, such as the longbow, the melee weapons are defined into three categories. The swing, overhead, and stab, or left mouse button, mouse wheel down, and mouse wheel up, respectively. The LMB attack is the swing attack. It deals moderate damage, more than the stab, but less than the overhead. It also has moderate range, which is less than the stab, but more than the overhead. When the LMB attack is used against an archer, it will do 75 damage to the head, 60 to the torso and arms, and 48 to the legs. This means that 2 hits to the torso or 3 to the legs will result in a kill, and 2 hits to the head will result in a decapitation of your enemy. When used against the man-at-arms, the LMB attack will do 64 damage to the head, 51 to the torso and arms, and 41 to the legs. This means an identical number of hits is required to kill the man-at-arms, as with the archer. However, note the archer will die quicker as more damage is done to the archer than to the man-at-arms. The vanguard starts off where the swing attack becomes far less useful. This time around, it will do only 45 damage to the head, 36 to the body, and 29 to the legs. This means that 3 hits to the head or torso, or 4 to the legs, will be required before you come away with the kill. As you can well imagine, the swing attack becomes less effective against the knight, dealing a mere 30 damage to the head, 24 to the body, and only 19 to the legs. A minimum of 4 hits is required with the swing to kill a knight. Given knights can usually kill you in 1 or 2 hits, it's best to try to stick into a 1v1 encounter with such enemies, if at all possible. Overall, the overhead swing does more damage to all targets at the expense of some of your range. For example, against the archer, the overhead swing shall do 88 damage to the head, 70 to the body, and 56 to the legs. This means a maximum of two hits is required with an overhead against an archer before you are awarded the kill. When opposed against the man at arms, this damage increases to 74 to the head, 60 to the torso and arms, and 48 to the legs, based off the old man at arms stance. This means that whether you slash or overhead, enemy man at arms will require the same amount of hits before they die. Given that swing is faster and has better reach, my attack of choice would be the swing over the overhead when against the man-at-arms. When an overhead is applied against the vanguard, you will do considerably more damage than the swing attack, this time dealing 50, 53 damage to the head, 42 to the body, and 35 to the legs. This lowers the minimum hits required from 3 hits to 2, provided that the target is at full health and both hits are to the head. The knight's stats improve slightly over the swing, but still lack much killing ability. With only 35 damage to the head, 28 to the body, and 22 to the legs, the broadsword is virtually unaffected against the knight with both the swing and the overhead. The last attack, the mouse wheel up, will stab, and this has the longest reach and will also occur at the quickest amount of time. A stab attack will hurt your damage output against the arch class, however, only dealing 62 damage to the head, 50 to the torso and arms, and a mere 40 to the legs. The archer is shockingly re resilient to stabbing attacks. The man-at-arms, also being lightly armored, is similarly resistant to stabbing attacks. With only 55 damage done to the head, 44 to the body, and 35 to the legs, stabbing is also generally unaffected against the man-at-arms. The vanguard has particular weakness, however, to such stabbing attacks, receiving the same amount of damage as the man-at-arms, which, given that the vanguard is heavily armored, and the man-at-arms is lightly armored, this means that the vanguard receives a considerable amount of damage. The knight is also weaker to stabs than any other attack, however it's still rather resilient, dealing only 34 damage to the head, 28 to the body, and 22 to the legs. These damage values are almost equivalent to the overhead. But, given that stabs are added quickness and range, it is clearly the more viable choice when put up against knights. In short, when you're against archers, be sure to use the overhead attack. When you're against a group of men-at-arms, you better start swinging. And against vanguards and knights, stabbing will clearly give you the best damage potential for each hit. However, mixing up your attacking style can really benefit you in the long run, as enemies as the match drags on will catch on to your strategies and find ways to thwart it. Given the broadsword's usefulness in slashes but low stabbing damage, a skirmisher like class is the best setup suited for the broadsword. Be sure to use the dodge regularly, not only as a defensive tool but also as an offensive one. Be sure to keep an eye on your stamina bar, however. If it depletes, you will be left unable to block and dodge effectively, thus killing all your defenses. For your primary slot, 
you will obviously be using the broadsword. In the secondary slot, the short sword will help you deal decent damage in tight spaces when the broadsword's length and swinging ability isn't particularly useful. These spaces include tighter interiors. In the special slot, the buckler will save your life as a last resort defense when dodging will take too long or is otherwise unusable, such as if your stamina bar is low. Also, as an added benefit of the buckler, you will not be hampered down in the form of speed, meaning you move faster at the expense of some minor defensive traits. However, given that the man-at-arms is not exactly the most defensive class, dodging is a far better option than blocking, so the smaller size of the buckler is not a problem. Note that the buckler will not block everything, and if used like a heater shield, enemies will often leave you dumbfounded as they slice, stab, or bash their way through the buckler's less defensive capabilities. Just be sure to dodge and strike quickly. Don't be afraid to lead your enemy to a chase, and then surprise them by quickly turning on them with a few dodges and a quick finishing stab. In short, the broadsword is a very useful weapon at closer ranges against lightly armored enemies. However, it, with its poor stabbing characteristics against heavier armored enemies, you may find yourself at a downside. However, with the effective use of the broadsword and the dodge ability, your enemies will be left feeling as if they can't hit the broad side of a barn.